So without further ado, if you don't have any questions, I got my pom poms. Are we excited? Yes, 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 yes. I never was a cheerleader, but always wanted to be one. So this is the best that I can do. Here's my little pom pom. This is such an honor to introduce my nephew, Pastor Elect Douglas Williams. Oh my goodness. This is truly a family affair. I have my oldest sister introducing me to the stage. My dad is in the building doing an opening closing prayer. My nephew as a presenter. I don't care if nothing happens. My, I got family in the audience. If nothing else happens today, it's about family. It's about friends. It's about love. Um, I'm overjoyed. So first and foremost, he's a servant of the Most High God. He's a husband to a beautiful bride, Ashley, and a father of two children. He's born in York, Pennsylvania. He joined the Navy after high school in 2001. Served 11 years of dedicated naval service. After his naval service, attended Virginia College, served as a student ambassador, graduated with high honors, as he graduated with the highest GPA for the class of 2015. Training is canceled in the DNA. In 2016, he completed his Bishop's A.C. Richardson's Ministers in Training class and is now an ordained pastor elect where, where he is being trained to execute the office and full duties of an ordained pastor. One of Douglas's greatest joys and one which he believes is among the top honors and titles in life is minister of the gospel. Without further ado, please put your hands together and welcome <laughs> So I'm gonna start up here, but I am gonna come down there. I like to be personal with my girls. Um, I thank each and every one of you for showing up today. I think that you're gonna have an awesome time. Remember while I'm up here, I am by default a comedian, so don't be afraid of that. I promise you, you will laugh. Don't be afraid. Um, I have to be comfortable with you, so I expect you to have to be comfortable back with me. Um, I will be doing some hiring during out this process. So I will get 20 minutes, guys, I'll need y'all to participate. So don't be wasting my time because she's gonna keep me, she's gonna keep me on board with my time. All right. So um, before we get started though, my job is to make sure that you guys are unstoppable when we leave this place. So um, I'm gonna ask y'all to bow with me in prayer, and I'm gonna make sure that you are unstoppable. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father God, that you have all of the glory. Father God, we thank you that this has been set up, Father God, in recognition of you. Father God, my mission here, Father God, is to make the people who are under the sound of our voice unstoppable. And we know, Father God, that this flesh has limitations in it. This flesh is stoppable, Father God, but our spirit, you have given us new beginning, is unstoppable. So, Father God, right now, Father God, we ask you, Father God, that everyone under the sound of our voice, Father God, believe that the Savior has been sent to us, Father God, that he, will, that he came, he died, and he rose from the dead, Father God, and that through him we have access to eternal life. So, Father God, my prayer is that for me, other people who are listening to this, know that. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so with that prayer I just prayed, you guys now have access to being unstoppable. Don't mean that you're unstoppable yet, but you have access to being unstoppable. I have 10 things that I'm going to do with you that I'm going to be done. As I said, I'm just kept on the time limit, so I'm going to be brisk with this. I'm going to, my scripture text is going to come out of Mark chapter 4. And I'm going to start at the 34th verse. And it says, But without a parable, he speak, he not to them, and he went along and described all things to his disciples. And the same day, when evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so now that it was full. And he was in a hinder part, or the high part of the ship, a steep on a pillow. And they awake him, saying unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, 
and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have not faith? And they feared to see them, be saying to one another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the seas obey him? Can I have an amen to the reading of the word? I'm coming down here with y'all. Yeah. 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 All right, as I said, I'm going to be doing some hiring because I don't trust my time. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. So, who in the building want $20? Are you? I, so, so I want $20? I, I'm, I'm going to go to this person over here. You got a cell phone now? Yes. All right. I need you to bring up a stopwatch. Okay. Hold on, hold on, the good question right here on Kyrie, man. Oh, I need to find that stop on. Hey, this is funny, I want to stop on. I know you're not saying that, right? No, 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 I just want to ask you. All right, good question. Don't worry about it, just bring up the clock. Hold me to three minutes per per time. All right, I need one more, I need one more participant. I, uh, I got a gentleman in the back. All right, so I'm going to give you a list. I'm gonna get you a fist and then I'm gonna need you to um, tell me my other thing. No, no, I should be remembering my long time. All right, so you got a pen and paper, you should have one with you. I got some topics that I'm gonna cover. If ever I start stuttering and I'm, I can't figure out where I wanna go, I need you to yell out my next topic, all right? So, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you to me now. First one, y'all listen to me, I write this down as I give it to him. So let's deal with all, all these topics. All right, the first one is going to be focus. The next word I want you to write. Uh oh, oh, hold on, hold on, let me check the camera. Next word is why. All right. Number three I want you to write is pray. Number four is self satisfying faith. Number five, I'm going to write is mind your circle. Circle, mind your circle. Number six, I'm going to write practice. Number seven, I'm going to write face your challenges, face yourself. That's all number seven. All number seven. Face your challenges, nice, face yourself. Number eight, I want you to write consistency. Number nine, I want you to write become the teacher. And number 10, I want you to write build your relationship with Christ. Let's start over time. It's all good. No, that's Build your relationship with Christ. All right. So for this, so I got I got twenty more dollars in my pocket. It's gonna be for a volunteer, but I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna take out what I need y'all. So the first hand I see is gonna be actually the first hand. No, 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 no. Let's see, look, I'm practicing right now. We didn't do that step there. Yeah. But we gonna we gonna get there. All right. So right. And it's going to be like my very first test I'm going to get done. All right. So number one is focus. Yes. Number one is focus. This is the key for you guys to become unstoppable. All right. So number one, I want you to focus. I want you to pick one thing. Now, please write this down. I want you to pick one thing that you want to focus on. See, too many times in life, we call ourselves that we want to do something, right? And we got all this stuff lined up of what we want to do. And all that stuff serves as a distraction. Pick one thing. Write it down on your paper. This right here is going to be something tangible that you guys want to be. I'm not I'm ready to give y'all more to speech. I'm up here to teach y'all how to be unstoppable. So pick one thing that you want to focus on. Whether it be ministry. Whether it be your finances. Whether you want to be the next millionaire. Focus on this thing. I'm going to tell you about millionaires, right? When they became millionaires, 
Their goal might have not been to be a figure. Their goal might have been, let's create the first car, let's create the first computer, right? But they focused on that one thing. And when they focused on that one thing, everything else lined up for them. So if you want, if you want finances, focus on money. Focus on how to get money. Don't worry about loving your wife. Don't worry about loving your kids and all that other kind of stuff, right? Because all that other stuff serves you as a distraction. I want you to pick one thing out that you want to be uncomfortable and then focus on it. All right, now I need my one representative. Who is it? I got the first hand right here. Come on, be the first one. Come on up here. I got, I, I got something I need you to do. Just stand right here. I need you to close your eyes. I need you to walk to me. All right, look, hey, hey, she, 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 beat, she beat my point. That wasn't supposed to happen. But you have to see, thank you for that. All right. Hey, look, hey, she actually beat the honor, right? Because what was supposed to happen, she was supposed to miss me, right? The last thing I said is come to me with her eyes closed. I was expecting her to end up over here and walking to a table and all that, but that did not happen. All right, so what I was basically supposed to point out, that it didn't happen here, is that with your eyes closed, you can't see, you can't focus. Right, so you need to gain something to focus your attention on, and you need to be able to see and vision and get to the destination. You need to pick one thing. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is why. I got you. Thank you. The next thing I want to know is why. Why is it important that you understand what your purpose is? See, your why will keep you in line with your purpose. Your why will wake you up every single day. If you don't want to get out of bed, when you just tired. And your kids are getting on your nerves and everything else, the people around you, your vision is not, not lining up. We expected to have this building full with people, and, and it didn't turn out exactly the hot plan. But you know what? Why it wakes you up in the morning, get you to pat yourself on the back, say, Come on, we can do it, and get on the road. So, first, you have to understand your why. You got to get your focus, and then you got to understand why you're doing it. So, after the why, we're going to talk about number three thing, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time here because a lot of people will leave this call. After your why, right, once you, once you identify your focus and you know your why, this is the time that you're most, you're most motivated to get out and do what you want to do. You're like, okay, I got my mission, I know why I'm doing it, and you're excited, you're telling people about your dreams, you're telling people about your vision, and you're just so excited, you don't see nothing that's going to stop you. Matter of fact, at this moment, you are unstoppable at your focus and your why. At that moment. But it's at that same moment. It's at that same moment where your greatest attacks are being fought against you from the enemy. When you're at the highest of high, right? The, the devil is not waiting for you to be at your lowest and low to attack you. So when you're going through your greatest moments in life, right? When you're up on your highest mountain. The attacks that's going to come at you are at your highest mountain level attack. He's not waiting for you to be down in the dirt to attack you. So when you feel those attacks, you're going to feel like the whole world is crashing down on your children. Because that's what you felt at that moment when you set your body. Is the whole world was at your, um, at your feet and you were ready to conquer it. So understanding your why, the next one I'm saying is going to be prayer. So in your prayer, these are the things that you should pray for. Write these down. Pray for wisdom. Pray for stamina. Pray for endurance. Pray for help. Pray for people to come along your side to help you when you're weak. Those are the things I want y'all to pray for when you're when you're setting your focus. Because all those areas is what's going to have people are going to abandon you. The team that you thought that you had together ain't going to show up. Not feel alone on this mission. So pray between you and God. What prayer does, right, is prayer takes your thoughts and it turns it into words because it's speaking. And God built this whole earth that we live in off of words. He said, Let there be, let there be, let there be. In our sixth day, he created man and he gave us, he said, Let, let us create man in our image and in our likeness, right? But he used that with words. And so he gave man the same power that he has. So let him create in my image and in my likeness. So use your words to your advantage. And I'm going to give a words in the next thing is called self-satisfying faith. Sometimes during your journey, sometimes during your journey, 
you get the point and you just just don't know what the next step to take is. And this is the time when you can't say, I quit. It's over. I'm done. I can't figure it out. Watch your words. Those are unstoppable words. You will not be unstoppable if you use any of those words. Because your words, the same words that God used to create the earth, is the same words that he put inside of us. And if you use those words to stop yourself, self-satisfying faith will work both ways. It works negative and it works positive. So if you say, I can't make it, the whole universe begins to bend and you will not make it. So the same thing that you said out that you wanted to succeed, that you wanted to do when you wanted to succeed, if you say, I'm going to conquer the mountain, then you go to conquer the mountain. And in the scripture that I read, right, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. That was the goal. That was the focus. The why was because when we wanted to go over, when he wanted to go over there, there was some ministry. As soon as he got to go over the other side, he met a, a man possessed with demons. And Jesus asked, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion. For we are men. This man was possessed with many demons. So the why was Jesus had ministry on the other side. So we understand now that Jesus had a focus when he said he had a why. And then he had to self satisfy with let us go to the other side. Right? Jesus um, also, also declared let us leave. So anyway, once they got to the other side, I'm sorry, in the midst, there was a storm, as I heard say, a storm, and they began to overtake the boat. In that storm, one of the gentlemen said, Hey Lord, we need you to wake up. Care is not, care is not that we perish. That was the last words that the that after the said after Jesus said, let us go to the other side. So the next word was, care is not that we perish. If Jesus didn't wake up and do something about that, the last word over the people, we perish. Self-satisfying faith was that whole boat would have sick. Nobody was going to make it to the other side because the last word spoke was we perish. So Jesus gets up, he calms the winds, he calms the sea, and that's going to be our next, our next thing. Hey, hey, you and go my next thing after that. Mind your circle. Mind your circle. Yeah. Mind your circle. Right. So Jesus had to get out and rebuke one of the people that's in the circle. That is the hardest thing to do. Sometimes we're looking for people to motivate us and get us along the way, and they speak negative on the mission that we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to go to the other side, and this guy said, We perish. That is not going to the other side. So Jesus had to rebuke that man. In your circle, guys, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to let people know you're not cut out for this mission. I had a guy in the Navy who I served who called him Holy Tyson. He looked like a vendor Holy Bill, but he sounded like Mike Tyson. This guy was my greatest motivator in the Navy. When I went to Cuba, when I came back, I was all six times. I ain't got none of that stuff down. But I had it. I had it. Right? But Holy Tyson was like, come on, Will, what are you doing? Come on, Will. Right? And I'm under the weight vest, right? And I got like 245 pounds on my weight. I got probably about 200 pounds on my weight. 45 pounds on my weight. Come on, Will, you can do it. I get to a point about my third push. I cannot push the weight no more. I am serious. Come on, Will, you can do it. Come on. And I'm shaking. And all of a sudden, the bar starts coming back this way. Holy Tyson did not come over and pull the bar up. Holy Tyson was a bodybuilder. He probably could have came up with one hand and pulled the bar, but he did not come. The bar landed all the way on my chest. And I'm sitting there like, and I got a motivator telling me, come on, will you do it? But all my strength is already out, right? So I'm sitting there with 245 pounds on my chest, and I can't get up. This bar has to be pinned to the Now the whole gym is sitting there watching me. Because Holy Tyson over there yelling, come on, Will, you can do it. <laughs> right? But it was great that he was a motivator, right? But what I needed was somebody to come pick this bar up on my chest. Oh, if I go back and talk to Holy Tyson right now and say, hey, you're not the guy I need for this mission. I need somebody who's going to come over here and pick this bar up on my chest so I can breathe. Because right. if you leave this bar on my chest just a little bit longer, I'm going to die. Right. You know? so, so don't be afraid to tell people, hey, I, I thank you for motivating me, but I don't need you for this mission. I need somebody to help me push the bar. I need somebody to push the bar. All right. What we got that? I got to hurt to finish that scenario. Practice. What we got? Practice. 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 Practice is something hard that nobody wants to do. Because right? everybody likes to play in the game. But practice is where you're going to learn what your team is making. You're going to learn the strengths of your team. I, I told you, Holy Tyson was motivated. 
right? I had some other friends over here that my brother came to help me pick up the bar, but they were there that day, right? But I understand the strengths of my team and I can activate and use them at the same level. And also in practice, you're going to identify what your um, obstacles are. You're going to understand what's in the way so that you begin to overcome those things. You got to put a plan together intentionally to overcome those things. Practice is going to help you achieve the unstoppable view that you're trying to do. You have to practice, brother. Practice also means practice being the person who you, who you imagine yourself being in the end. So if I wasn't being the executive CEO, right? And I got all this focus together. I got my, my mind in my circle. I did all this self satisfying on faith. I did all this stuff, but I never practiced being the person who I imagined myself being when I was going to get there. Then when I get there, I'm going to be looking around like, what to do next? So you have to practice being unstoppable. Whatever that thing is that you focused on, practice it right now. So that when you get there, you're ready to perform the, the whole thing. Your why should keep you while you're practicing. Your why should be the main reason why you wake up and go to practice each and every day. Face your challenges for yourself. Face your challenges. I told you during practice, you're gonna you're gonna find your obstacles, you're gonna find your challenges during your practice. Do not run from your challenges. If you run from your challenges, you will be stopped because that is the one thing that you cannot overcome. During the mind your team, mind your um, mind your team, mind your circle, you should have identified some people that will be able to help you get to this part where you're going to be able to face your challenges. There are this whole earth is not designed for you to be successful by yourself. It's not designed for you to be successful by yourself. It is designed for people. God said that we are like lions fitly joined together, which means we all need each and every one of each other to be successful. Every business person needs a customer. So you cannot be successful by yourself. During this time, I, I really need y'all to focus on what stops you. Maybe you can Google somebody who's done the same thing that you're trying to do and reach out to them and figure out how they accomplished the obstacle. But you have to beat the obstacles, whether it's you, your team, or the research that you do. Beat your obstacles. But you have to recognize what they are first. Consistency. Consistency. I'm going to tell y'all a quick story, and I hope and I hope that this gets through y'all head. So, if I was to tell you I'm going to hit you with a drop of water or I'm going to hit you with a rock, which one would you rather be hit with? Uh, I'm going to hit you with a drop of water or I'm going to hit you with a rock, which one would you be hit with? Water. water. Right. All right, so, I don't know what I'm going to be hit with because I'm going to tell you this. Time is the thing that determines what you want to be hit with. A rock, right? If I got hit with one rock and it lasted 15 minutes of feeling the pain, I, I, I think I'll take the rock. Because if I told you, if I told you I'm gonna let that same drop of water hit you in the head for the next 20 years, that water will actually that one drop of water will crush your brain and you will die. So there's a, a, a thing I want you to Google. There's a, it's a drop of water and it's landing on a rock, and, it, and they've been recording this thing for like over 100 years. And the water actually, one drop of water, like every 10 seconds, actually penetrated this rock. To this this rock does not even look like a rock anymore. It's a smooth thing in order to build it. So definitely consistency is what I'm talking about. That drop of water over 100 years, if you just keep on beating your head at what you're trying to achieve, just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, you will achieve that thing. Do not give up. Consistency will cause you to be unstable. Every successful person practices consistency. All right. So I got to get ready to wrap up. These two things, give me my last, give me my last two. Become the teacher. Become a teacher. Become a teacher. When you teach people, you also practice what you learn. When I, for the first person who ever built a cake, or the first person made a cake, I was going to ask some of the old people here if you know how to make a cake, but I'm running out of time. So, the first person who ever made a cake, they had to go out and they had to go out and find, okay, the eggs work in the solution, butter works in the solution, milk works in the solution, flour works in the solution. They had to get all that stuff together, right? But they didn't need the next person to wonder how to make a cake. They put the ingredients on the side of the box so that the next person can come up and say, how do I make a cake? And then read the ingredients. Now there are people out there who want to do extra with the ingredients, like add blueberries or add strawberries. But, but the main ingredients of how to make a cake was taught to each and every one of us because we're not the pioneers of making the cake. When you discover what it is that you're focusing on, reach back and teach somebody 
how to do the thing that you are that you accomplished. During that time, you can also find maybe people that add to your team, add to your um, focus, and take you further than what you've been wanting to go. So definitely, definitely um, become a teacher. And I'm gonna wrap it up because I got two minutes left. Um, the last thing is build a relationship with Christ. In the beginning, the first thing I did is he put you guys to be unstoppable. Was I prayed over you, over you all? I let y'all know that there was a savior. This this physical flesh is stopping you. I can't fly at my limit. But your spirit is unstoppable. Matter of fact, whether you go to heaven or you go to hell, your spirit lives on for eternity. Your spirit is unstoppable. So, my prayer for you is to build your relationship with Christ because with Christ, all things are possible. There is nothing that you cannot achieve, there's nothing that you cannot do if you leave it in the hands of God. There are some, there are sometimes you will walk through life, and with all this stuff that I just gave you to be successful, I promise you a non-believer can access and do every one of these things, and they can be successful. The difference between you and that non-believer is you're going to have grace. So the things that the non-believer struggle with, your relationship with Christ, Christ is going to carry you over. It's going to be smooth. So build your relationship with Christ. Make sure you have your focus. Know your why. Have self-satisfying faith, practice, be consistent. And these things right here will get you to be the unstoppable you. My name is Doug Williams. I really hope that y'all enjoy this message. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to give you whatever inspiration that you need so that you can achieve the unstoppable you. I'm going to turn you back over to the host.